Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Today we're going to be talking about risk on or risk off and how to identify if you are in a risk on or risk off market. So today we're going to be talking about Bitcoin, first of all. So not going to get too deep into the weeds of Bitcoin, where I think it's going, but you kind of get some of that undertone in this video. However, we will have a dedicated video to Bitcoin in the coming future once it kind of has a little bit of a pullback. So be on the lookout for that. But before I digress, as you can see here, Bitcoin is one of the indicators I use for risk on versus risk off mentality in the market. As we can see here, in the same span that Bitcoin was trading sideways, the market, which we'll jump over to here, was kind of trading sideways or down. So if you don't have the, what would some be coined as the riskiest asset in the classification of asset where crypto is more risky versus a stable company like Coca-Cola or Pepsi or the S&P or NASDAQ, that means that people are more conservative with their money versus, as you can see here, once Bitcoin actually broke out in roughly around October, if we jump back over to the index, we can see in October 23rd is what signified the bottom in the market. So using this correlation, we can establish where things are going to start getting into a risk on mentality versus risk off. If Bitcoin is going down or staying stagnant where people are not willing necessarily to advance risk, we can identify that as an area where we either have to be conservative with our trades, look for short opportunities, or even maybe just step back and don't trade in that time span or play theta dependent options that are basically collecting theta on a larger range and not necessarily looking for a bigger move. But if you're just a standard investor or trader, then you're looking for short uh, movement to the downside or sideways movement, not really going anywhere as long as Bitcoin is going sideways. And if it's going down, you get more downside in the markets because people aren't necessarily willing to put up risk. They're not willing to support that price action. So now what does this mean for us as we have clearly identified that we broke out of this range on Bitcoin? Well, one, as you can see here, today we had a pretty massive push on Bitcoin. This is actually, as I'm recording this, guys, it is in after hours trading. So you'll see the little red dot signifying the day that you guys are watching its price action. But I'm really paying attention to this big candle's price action. And that could signify that we could get an interesting break in the markets tomorrow, where a continuation of that risk on mentality, where Bitcoin and asset classes like it are pushing higher, whereas other asset classes are necessarily not. Not the stable and boring assets versus the more risk on. And you could see also sector rotation. That doesn't necessarily mean that because Bitcoin is going higher that we're going to see a massive rally in tech. It could definitely be preceded prior to that by Bitcoin or Bitcoin will precede the rally. So we have to keep an eye on that. Right now, Bitcoin's pushing 4,200, just massive explosion out of a sideways consolidation. So right now, from this indication, I expect Bitcoin to probably continue in that risk on mentality and start tackling some of this price action up here that it previously held around the 4,500 and maybe even going as high as 50,000. So our sorry, correction, I said 4,500 when I meant 45,000 and 50,000 afterwards. So again, this is signifying a risk on mentality. This is going into the end of the year where there is seasonally more of a risk on mentality. However, like we said, we shouldn't identify one single indicator as our selected risk on risk off. We want to see what the broader market is telling us. The second indicator that I use is the VIX. I talk about the VIX on this channel a lot. Right now, VIX is very depressed. It's below the 21 day moving average. So for all those that don't know what a moving average is, it's simply, as it's called, simple moving average, the pr average price over a set period that's denoted by the number. So 21 days, that means 21 day moving average, which indicates basically the price of the 21 days average together and therefore represented as a line for us, as we can see here, as the price was trending up, the 21 day average was getting higher. As the price was trending down, the 21 day moving average is getting lower. 
So you want two candle closes above that moving average to basically indicate a flip in the trend. In the case of VIX, when you want a risk on mentality, you want to see VIX below that line. The second you get an indication of VIX going above that line, well, maybe it's looking at people are being more conservative, we're being more of a pullback mentality, or we're basically going lower. So that's where you want to kind of halt on putting more money into trades that are, let's say, not working in your favor. You want to go maybe to more conservative strategies where you want to maybe take a break. Don't over trade. There's a very common thing in the industry where people feel like they have to be keyboard warriors. I apologize for the lack of better of a term, but indicating they have to match buttons, they have to hit this trade, they have to hit the next lottery ticket. It's not going to go that way. The only way that goes is blowing up your account. And this is kind of something you can meld into your trading strategy, investment strategy to determine when and where to play risk versus not play risk. And as always, that's going to basically be depending on what you trade. So use this as a guide, not the Bible itself of what you have to do. So VIX being in this depressed state right now, I'm expecting a risk on mentality. However, one of the things I notice is that VIX is consolidating in this region. That means I have to be on the lookout for an area of popping out, getting above the 21 day moving average. And I may not necessarily in the next week or so want to put a lot of long term risk on. If I'm looking at a shorter term risk, this is telling me, hey, VIX is going sideways. There's a possibility in the near future indicated by a week or a new catalyst coming up that we get a massive pop on VIX, which is a risk off mentality. And when VIX is basically pushing those highs and weakening, like we saw back here, where we want to see VIX kind of stalling out. And that will tell us, hey, this is where we get risk on. As we can see here, if we follow that advice, October 23rd signified the bottom of the market in the most recent, not saying the bottom like an October bottom, guys. I'm saying in the most recent bottom. So with that, we basically have to see, okay, VIX trending down, that's when I go risk on. VIX getting close to the 21 moving average, hey, maybe I need to put the brakes on some longer term trades, take some shorter scalps. And that leads us to my third best indicator for understanding if you're a risk on or risk off mentality. And that's small caps. Small caps, as I cover on this channel, are the bread and butter of the market. A lot of people don't necessarily view it as that. They want to view it as a magnificent seven. But small caps are able to give you an indication if you're seeing rotation, if you're seeing bullishness in the market, are you needing to take a step back and maybe calm down? Or is there broader support in the market for your riskier trade? So right now, if I see this, I'm seeing small caps are above the ranges that we established on the weekend deep dive. Link down in the description below, guys, if you did not watch it, and I will have it in the end card of this video. But this is indicating bullishness, breaking out bullishness on small caps, whereas S&P and NASDAQ, which is our broader markets, are going to indicate maybe some weakness. As we can see here, S&P just kind of going sideways today. NASDAQ actually coming to the 21 moving average, ticking it, and then basically pushing back above the level I said, I did warn you guys in the weekend deep dive that I would not be surprised if we get a fake out to the bottom and then rotation up. If you were playing the bullish side today, congratulations, you're probably gonna make a good profit this week. Again, I stated I was looking bullish in the market. This morning didn't necessarily start out bullish. However, the levels are intact and we have to trust the levels for the market. Same way with S&P, as you can see, consolidation, NASDAQ wick down, push back up above the levels, and IWM trending strong. That means you're getting a broader market rally, meaning the momentum can definitely hold. When you see all the confluence of these three things, that tells you that there is a stronger bedrock of the market. And this is maybe where you actually get risk on with the caution that VIX is in a position that you need to be a little cautious two, three weeks out that we definitely could get some consolidation there. But if the market decides to get in some bullish momentum, 
don't try to fight that momentum. That will tell you where you need to kind of layer your trades, layer your investments, maybe wait for a pullback if you're looking for a pullback, but we definitely have more fuel to go in this market. And as always, I'll leave you guys with the tidbit for what I think is going to happen this week in the market. As I covered, we did get exactly what we were looking on the weekend deep dive of a fake out on the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ gave it away along with the Russell pushing to a weekly breakout. Now, the week is young, so make sure you guys don't get overzealous like I was warning in the beginning of this video that VIX is still looking like it's consolidating. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's done. It could break down lower. We have to keep an eye on that. Today, I think a lot of dampness in the market was due to bonds, basically just pushing earlier in the day, the 10, the 5, the 2, and the 1, all were green on the day. However, we can see that the overall trend is down. TLT still pushing strong, not making lower lows. And you just had some reshuffling of the markets. Chips didn't do so well today. However, they did, similar to the NASDAQ, have that think on the 21-day moving average. And we are above all the key moving averages for the rest of the market. XLK, or sorry, KRE. Let's take a look. Banks pushing higher. XLF kind of consolidating in this region. And we got XHB, which is home builders, pushing up strong. So some of these key sectors are still holding strong. As you can see, tech having a hammer candle. So again, tech sector, hammer candle today, NASDAQ kind of a doji spinning top candle or reversed, I should say. So that's bullish for the market, even with oil. Oil basically still looking bearish, even with OPEC announcing cuts. So the price, people are trying to fight the price action on oil as it's heading lower and natural gas is just basically taking everyone's lunch, You're sitting right down at the 200 day moving average. And as you can see here, all bullishness is about to go out the window with this move lower if we break 2.554 on natural gas. So what do you need to know for the market tomorrow or essentially today when you guys are watching this video? Well, we got jobs on deck this Tuesday. Jolt job openings at 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Time expected quarter of a million a decrease from previously. So let's see if we still have that strong jobs market going into this week. And then the big news going into Friday is going to be average hourly earnings, payrolls and non-farm payrolls, along with manufacturing, unemployment and private non-farm payrolls. And with that, guys, we're going to conclude today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Throw it down in the comments section below if you guys enjoyed it. Throw it also in the comment section what you think of the video. We really want your feedback and that would encourage us to do more videos like this. Thank you again so much and I hope you have a wonderful day.